fired up. We had Michelle Dawn Mooney on the program to come and sing the national anthem. She evidently is running late. Uh, in the interest of keeping on schedule, we're going to go on. If she pops in later, we will uh, throw her in the mix. So right now, I'm going to introduce Sean. Uh, thank you, Kurt, and, and good morning to everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm going to uh, lead in the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you could please rise. And, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And that, please post the colors. Thank you. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. If we could bring on Mayor Jack Glasser. Everybody sit down and relax. Um, what a special day to hear it's here in Summers Point. Um, especially as September 15th is Richard Summers' birthday, his 243rd birthday. Um, and our special guest, uh, I was so proud to break bread with him last night at the Tropicana, but the, the crew of the USS Summers. So please, everybody give a round of applause for these veterans who have come to Summers Point. Thank you all for coming this distance to the shores of Summers Point. Um, I, it just uh, amazes me that you will be able to do this and, and my new buddy Bob Platt's around here somewhere and uh, we've been on the phone for the last, there he is, for the last couple of years and uh, and Mike and uh, Commander Mike uh, and all of you that I've been able to, to meet the last couple of days, it's just it's so great. Um, but thank you and here you are today, a day that we we feel every year that it's solemn in Summers Point because our favorite son, Richard Summers, who lost his life along with the crew of the Intrepid on September 4th, 1804. He will always be remembered by this town and we will always, always continue to try to get his remains returned to Summers Point. It's been a great effort on my part. It's a task that I, I, I just have a passion for, and there's so many other people. Uh, Sally Hastings is here, Walt Gregory's in the back. Uh, there were so many people that have been together in Summers Point. Uh, former Congressman Frank Lobiondo. Um, it's just that we have that passion, but we want them home. As a veteran, We've always lived to say that we don't leave anyone behind. And we have left Summers and the crew of the Intrepid behind. They still lie, because I don't say rest, they lie in the Episcopal Cemetery in Tripoli. So we will continue that fight, all of us together, because it's a great fight. And it's a fight that we need because we want them home. It's time. It's been a long past time. I'm just going to uh, mention a few of the elected officials that are here today. Uh, first of all, uh, in the back, John kind of snuck in, but uh, our assemblyman, John Armato, is a Air Force veteran, is here this morning. Um, chairperson of the Atlanta County Commissioners, Maureen Kern, who was former council president here in Summers Point. Uh, County Commissioner John Risley is here. Uh, from the city of Summers Point, council president Janice Johnston is here and she'll be coming up in a few minutes with a proclamation. Uh, to lead off was, of course, uh, former council president Sean McGuigan. Um, Karen Bruno, council person, is here and uh, um, Mike Owens standing, or Mike's very low key, sits in the corner, but he's a good guy. Um, so uh, I also want to thank um, these guys. 
and Assemblyman Vince Mazio. And we would kind of cancel the cancel person that said that. Um, these gentlemen holding the flags are uh, amongst our local chapter of the Legion Riders. Many of them are veterans, uh, and they're always here for Summer's Point. So I thank them for being here. Uh, as you see, the, our great banner, the, the American flag, is draped across our shore road, and it was put up by our Summer's Point Fire Department, and I thank you for that. And of course, to be able to close down Shore Road, um, uh, we had to get through our police department, so Chief Bob Summers and his crew are out there working hard this morning. Um, with that, uh, I just want to bring up uh, Chair of the County Commissioners, Maureen Kern. She has a few proclamations to give. Yeah. On behalf of the citizens of Atlantic County, Atlantic County Executive Dennis Sladovinson proudly joins in celebrating the birthday of Master Commandant Richard Summers and the former crew members of the USS Summers named in his memory in his birthplace, Summers Point, New Jersey, September 15, 2021. And you also have the one from the, uh, from that. Thank you and good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm standing here with uh, Mrs. Kern, who uh, was a council president as well as I was in Summers Point. Summers Point's very near and dear to my heart and we serve now on the County Board of Commissioners. This is an important day. It's an important day for our nation's history, for Atlantic County's history. These plaques that we present is only just a token. What's important is that we're here today. What's important is that we convey this history of Summers Point, this important history to Summers Point, to our children, our grandchildren, their children. That's what's important about this day. And the sacrifice that not only Richard made, but the entire crew of the Intrepid and all of our servicemen and women around the world that serve our country and protect what we have. So with that, I, I commend everyone for taking the time out of being their, their lives to, to be here today to share this important history. Thank you. And Bob's been planning this actually for a couple of years. We had to postpone it, and we're so glad we're able to have it. We had to postpone it due to you know not being able to have conventions and meetings. And he has uh, contributed to our tourism industry we by have. bringing the <laughs> by bringing all this into uh, Atlanta County and staying at the Tropicana, right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, I'm just going to say a few brief remarks, and maybe that'll sink in with all the rest of our speakers, and we can uh, move out of this hot sun. But uh, as a member of the Historical Society, a group that's been here for 35 years and fought to preserve the history of this town and the historic buildings, uh, I'm honored to have all of you here. And I was trying to think of what to say, and you could say a million things here. Uh, one thing is it's appropriate that this statue stands here. Uh, it's halfway between the birthplace of Richard Summers, which is just north of us, and uh, Summers Mansion, his grandfather's house, which is down the street. And it's next to uh, probably one of our greatest victories as a historical society was saving this grand old building from demolition when there was a referendum in town that 80% of the people said to tear it down. And we were able to reverse that. We were able to do things that made uh, believing in your history cool. Out of that became this historic district in front of us, uh, the preservation and a lot of activities toward remembering our heritage. And so with that, uh, after all the years that uh, Sean McGuigan, when he was council president, and I was just a lowly councilman that sat down the end, and I would get the Arts Commission assignment. Uh, I'm going to read a poem. I don't know how good it's going to be, but it's one that sunk in for me uh, from when I was a kid. And it was actually written about the sea, but the first time I ever heard it was on an uh, episode of Star Trek. So here it goes. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea in the sky. 
and all that I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the winds song and the white sail shaken and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Donna Moore, who will come up and explain a little bit about our mural on the building. Good morning. Good morning. I, um, I hope I am going to uh, speak about the mural uh, today, which depicts the life of our Richard Summers. And I hope you get a chance to really walk around the three sides of the, of the uh, library so that you can see all of the major events in his life, so beautifully depicted by our artist, Marianne Cannon. Um, the Arts Commission uh, of Summers Point and the Historical Commission in 2017, well prior to that we were raising money to pay for this, but we, um, we were thrilled to have Marianne um, join us in this project. She designed the mural, painted the mural, and as you can well see, most of it was on a scaffolding. Um, I, I don't know how she did it, but there's a base coat there, there's a preserving coat on the, um, on the exterior, so we're hoping that it, it remains a visual representation of Richard Summers for, for at least another 20 years, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it going. So thank you to Mary Ann Cannon. Um, so please do walk around all three sides. So, um, as you, as, you, as you have already heard a little bit this morning, um, my introduction of Master uh, Commandant Richard Summers, the Navy's first hero, who was born right here in Summers Point on this very day in, 19, in 1778, is quite an extraordinary young man who gained quite a reputation in his very short life. Let's begin his story in March of 1693 when John Summers claimed a land grant for 3,000 acres, which included Summers Point, Egg Harbor Township, Linwood, Northfield, and Ocean City. He called it Somerset Plantation. This was the first generation of the Summers family in southern New Jersey. The second generation is best represented by Richard Summers, John's son, who built the mansion overlooking the Great Egg Harbor Bay in the early 1720s. By the way, I'm going to open the mansion at 3 o'clock today so that if you can fit it into your schedule of events for today, um, you will be able to come into the first and the, and the second floor. Um, unfortunately, John died soon thereafter in 1723, and the mansion passed to his oldest son, John, who represents the third generation of the Summers family. John's brother was named Richard, later a colonel in the Revolutionary War. He was given a parcel of the family property and built the homestead, tavern, place of business, which can now be identified at the corner of Shore and Bethel Roads, about uh, a mile down Shore Road. A stone marker indicates that this was the birthplace of our na naval hero, Richard, in 1778. So, Given those facts, Richard never lived in the mansion. In fact, he lived in Summers Point for only three years before his father, Richard, involved in a business and as a privateer, felt that the family would be in danger living in Summers Point, so he moved them to Philadelphia, where he had also established several businesses. Father Richard left the homestead in the care of his eldest son, Constant, at this time, which was 1781. Young Richard's education thus began in Philadelphia in 1785 with a series of tutors and schools. Eventually, he entered the prestigious Episcopal Academy in Burlington, Burlington, New Jersey, on the banks of the Delaware River. It was here that he met Charles Stewart and Stephen Decatur, forging friendships that would last throughout his short life. Friendships that were feel, filled with adventure, honor, and service, ultimately bringing them together in military service at the time of war. After Richard left the Episcopal Academy in 1791, he attended Mr. Hunter's school in Woodbury, New Jersey, for about a year. Here he was formally um, taught navigation, among other things, over the course of a year. It is believed that Richard first went to sea at about the very time of his father's death, September 1794. He was barely 16 years old. He sailed first as a hand and then as a mate on a board on board a coaster owned by one of his family members, plying between the Great Egg Harbor River 
and the ports of New York and Philadelphia. Also at this mournful time, September 1794, Richard inherited the homestead and other properties in Pennsylvania, while his siblings, Constant and Sarah, inherited other aspects of the fam family properties and business. Richard, still a teenager, thus became a businessman, supervising the cutting of timber and shipping it to other ports, as well as taking care of properties in Summers Point in Philadelphia. By 1796, it is believed that Richard had his own vessel, which he used for shipping timber. Finally, um, he was appointed a midshipman on April 23, 1797, and served in the West Indies during the Quasi War with France on the frigate United States with Stephen Decatur and Stewart, and, uh, which was a ship commanded by Captain John Barry. By spring 1798, the very time when the present day Navy was begun, Richard received warrant as a midshipman on the United States 44 under Commander John Barry. On board, he was reunited with his friends Charles Stewart and Stephen Decatur, and his naval adventures began. On May 21, 1799, he was promoted to lieutenant. Summers was detached from the United States, the, the ship of the United States, on June 13, 1801, and ordered to the, to the Boston on July 30, 1801. He served on the latter frigate in the Mediterranean, and after the Boston, he returned to Washington, Washington D.C., and was furloughed in 1802 to await orders. On May 5, 1803, Summers was ordered to Baltimore, Maryland, to man, fit out, and command the USS Nautilus, and when the schooner was ready for sea, he sailed her to the Mediterranean. Soon he met Commodore um, Edward Preble on the Constitution, who was bringing a new squadron for action against the Barbary pirates. Nautilus sailed with Preble to Tangiers, where the display of American naval strength induced the Europeans of Morocco to renew the Treaty of 1786. Thereafter, Tripoli became the focus of Preble's, and therefore the Navy's, attention. Summer's service as commanding officer of Nautilus during operations against Tripoli won him promotion to Master Commandant on May 18, 1804. In the summer, he commanded a division of gunboats amongst five attacks on Tripoli during the First Barbary War. On the fateful day of September 4, 1804, Summers assumed command of the fire ship Intrepid, which had been fitted out as a floating volcano along 12 members of a volunteer crew. The vessel was loaded with 100 barrels of powder and 150 fixed shells. Intrepid was to be sailed into Tripoli Harbor and blown up in the midst of the Corsair fleet closed under the walls of the city. That night she got underway into the harbor, but she exploded prematurely, killing Summers and his entire crew. Some reports and the apparent opinion of Commodore Preble suggest that the premature detonation was a deliberate act by Summers to avoid capture by approaching sailors, an account which led to Summers' depiction as a martyr within the American Navy. The remains of the 13 sailors on the ship washed ashore the next day after the explosion. The bodies were buried in an unmarked mass grave outside Tripoli. In 1949, the Libyan government unearthed the remains and moved them to the current cemetery. Representatives of the United uh, the U.S. Navy attended an unveiling ceremony at the Monument to the Fallen Sailors on April 2, 1949. U.S. Defense Chief Leon Panetta visited the cemetery in Tripoli and placed a wreath on the grave site in December 2011, but efforts to repatriate the remains to the U.S. have been unsuccessful to date. And we, of course, hope that they will become successful in the near future. Please do walk around the, the entire mural so that you can see all the visual representations. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Uh, I'd like to introduce right now a longtime friend of Summers Point, um, former anchor to our TV station down here at Channel 40, and one of our great friends. Uh, like usual with traffic in South Jersey, he's running a little bit late, but let me introduce to you an old friend, uh, Michelle Dawn Mooney. Good morning, everyone. So you know this song. If you want to join in, please feel free. Lone sea, can you see by the dawn's early light? What's so proudly we hail? 
at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in their gay proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Like usual with these little these uh, local ceremonies, we kind of juggle the agenda around. Uh, it's my honor right now to uh, bring up um, Assemblyman Vince Mazio who has a uh, proclamation along with Assemblyman John Armato. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's, a, it's an honor to be here today. Uh, thank everybody for coming out here. Uh, myself and uh, Assemblyman Armato have this joint resolution to present from the state uh, legislature, the Assembly, that recognizes Richard Summers' birthday, and also the 12 crewmen who died uh, on that tragic day on September 4th, 1804. I think, you know, being a former mayor of Northfield, I think it's only important to say how important it is to keep our history alive in our towns. Uh, my father used to say, if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going, right? So we have to really keep that in the back of our minds when we are uh, elected officials that history is so important to our towns. So I commend Summers Point for keeping this tradition alive, and I would like to continue to work myself and uh, Assemblyman Armato on helping uh, the mayor and the elected officials uh, bring back uh, you know, this, uh, Richard Summers and the crewmen and put him in a, a permanent resting place. It's a lot of work, a lot of time, and I know a lot of time has been put into that, but I would be happy to work with them on that, and myself and Assemblyman Armato. Thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting us today. I'm always honored to come to events when it concerns our military. Uh, being an Air Force veteran, uh, I commend the mayor uh, when he says that we leave no one behind. Uh, anything in that effort, uh, we would, I would be personally uh, grateful if we can be involved in anything doing that to try to get those members back. But like I said, I applaud the effort here, the monument, the turnout today is, is always grateful. Uh, members of the military, I thank you all for your service. Thank you. He's not going too far. Um, thank you, uh, Assemblyman. I, I just want to make mention there's two gentlemen that dress whites, uh, Petty Officer Trujillo and his mate are down here from Fort Dix, uh, naval activities up there, and uh, I appreciate them coming this long way, representing the uh, the Secretary of the Navy. So, round of applause for for serving. So, and I just want to make mention uh, the former officers in attendance. I'm a land retired Captain Tom Tobio and wife Fran aboard the Summers. Uh, he was a lieutenant and navigator. Mr. Tom Moran, aboard the Summers 1967-69 Lieutenant and Marine Propulsion Assistance. I think he was DDG-34. And then also uh, Summers DDG-34, former officers, retired commander, Mike De Laurentiis, uh, someone who I got to meet in the last couple of days and a great guy. Uh, aboard the Summers 72 to 75 as Lieutenant Supply Officer. Uh, retired Commander Mike Newell, um, a South Jersey native. Uh, so, uh, aboard the Summers 76 to 79 as Lieutenant Supply Officer. And his guest and brother, um, retired Lieutenant Commander Brian Newell, submariner, no less. <laughs> so, hey, uh, 
you know, what can you say? That's why they don't pick on the Air Force today. Um, with that, I guess it's my turn to, uh, I have a proclamation. And you know, I'm going to keep this kind of short because it is kind of winded and it pretty much says everything. Um, and I'll be bringing up uh, Council President uh, to also read her proclamation. But the bottom line with this is um, we will always remember Richard Summers. Hands down, this town, the Summers name, um, what he means to our town. So, Bob. I'm going to present this real quick to you without reading it in entirety, um, but uh, because it is getting hot out here. So. Well, Bob's saying his walls are getting too filled with all this stuff, but that's all right. Um, again, uh, it. I, you know, one thing we like to do is laugh, and uh, we've been doing a lot of laughing the last couple of days since Bob came to town. So. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to introduce uh, our council president, uh, Janice Johnston. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I, I think it's great that we're doing things like this to make sure we keep our history at the forefront. There's so much history in Summers Point. I learned something new all the time that happened here, and it's uh, it's just amazing. So thank you to the Historical Society and the mayor for putting all this together. I will also not read the whole thing since the mayor is a little warm. We don't want to keep him here too long. But um, <laughs> I think you've all... <laughs> yes, the bars are open. Um, I'm just going to read the last whereas uh, the city will be honored by the presence of many of the USS Summers Crew Members Association at this ceremony today. Now, therefore, it is to be resolved, the city of Summers Point would like to formally acknowledge the Richard Summers Day ceremony scheduled for September 15th to be held at the Richard Summers Monument, sponsored by the city of Summers Point and the Summers Point Historical Society. It is further resolved that city council encourages all of our residents to participate in the celebration in order to learn about master commandant summers and his crew and his mission of the intrepid so i thank everyone for being here and um, this is from all of city council thank you special part is uh, it's my honor to meet uh, someone I just I've been talking to for the last two years and uh, I just met him uh, Friday night uh, when Bob and Mike came to Summers Point and we introduced them to, to Gregory's so uh, with that uh, it is my honor uh, to meet uh, my new friend a uh, guy I will uh, you know a lot of faith in and he's done a great job with putting this reunion together uh, the one and only Bob Plant. Thank you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to uh, mention is uh, I'll give you a little history on the background of the USS Summers Crew Members Association. We had our initial meeting in 2010 on April 26th, and we had located 20 individuals that had served on U the USS Summers DD-947. Uh, it was at that meeting that we um, Initial, initialized, if you will, um, and, and started the USS Summers Crew Members Association. With the help of the internet um, and all the social media, including Facebook and our website, we began to pick up additional individuals that had served on the Summers. Beginning with 20 on April 26th, it wasn't uh, 18 months later that um, we broke 200. And uh, as of today, 
We have 361 members on the Crew Members Association that serve the board, uh, one of three of the, of the USS Summer ships. We still have two remaining World War II veterans who served on the USS Summers DD-301 and the remainder of the folks on the DD-947 and the DDG-34. For everyone here, I'd like to just do a little clarification on, uh, on, on the fact that we have seven ships, but the Navy says, no, we don't have some, seven summers, we have six summers. But I have seven pictures showing seven <laughs> summer ships. So what happens is when the USS Summers DD-947 was being de decommissioned in, um, in, in and around Long Beach and San Francisco and went to the Navy yards, the entire superstructure of the 947 was removed. That means everything from the, the main deck up. And it was completely redone and missiles were added. And the ship was recommissioned again in 1968 as the USS Summers DDG-34. The Navy recognizes the 947 and the 34 as one ship because it utilized the same keel, which is the foundation of the building of a, of a Navy vessel. And that's why you'll hear the Navy say there were six USS Summers, and you can say, yeah, but there's seven pictures. <laughs> so since, since that time um, that we've been working with uh, on the association and with all of the current members, uh, we, we now have 361 members of the association. However, we have 509 former USS Summers shipmates uh, that served the board summers at, at one time or another. Uh, and hence, we have power in numbers. And our main goal now is to get another ship named Summers, another warship if we can. We're working diligently and have been. And we had a few uh, close calls uh, that, uh, that didn't pan out, but we're working on something right now with the help of uh, retired Commander Newell um, who uh, who uh, resides in Maryland and works in the D.C. area. So you can rest assured that the USS Summers uh, would would love to tell you that we have a new USS Summers with active duty folks to keep on our tradition that we started on April 26, 2010. Um, <clears throat> it took us a while to get here. This is our 10th anniversary reunion, and uh, it's, um, I kind of apologize that it took us so long to get here, but we had, we had a lot going on in forming this association, and um, uh, it, it worked out very well, and it's going to work out very well for all of us and all of you at Summers Point. Listen, we want to convey our thanks to all the citizens of Summers Point um, for allowing us to uh, be present here today and to, uh, to tell you that um, we will fight to get Richard Summers back on U.S. soil. Um, and we will continue our fight to get another U uh, ship named USS Summers. So we'd like to thank all of you in Summers Point. And we will celebrate our 10th anniversary reunion today with all of you in mind. So thank you, and I appreciate everyone's, uh, everyone's hospitality, if you will. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you after this event. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, it's my honor to introduce uh, former president of the Summers Point Historical Society, Lynn McEwen. Good morning. Sorry, I'm the shortest one here. How's everybody today? Excellent. Good. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for coming today. It's both an honor and a privilege to have as many veterans here today as we do, and I'd like to thank you all for your service. Today, on the 217th 
anniversary, I guess, of Richard Summers' birthday, we will remain intrepid. Master Commandant Richard Summers, Lieutenant Henry Wadsworth, Lieutenant Joseph Israel, Robert Clark, Isaac W. Downs, James Harris, William Harrison, William Keith, Hugh McCormick, Peter Penner, James Sims, Thomas Tompline, and Jacob Williams. to thank Jeff McNeil for on the bagpipes. Uh, before we conclude, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, check out the mural. The building next door, our city hall, in the council chambers, uh, there's a lot of uh, memorabilia in there, pictures of the USS Summers. There's letters from Richard Summers in there. And then the little church on the far side of that is our museum, the Summers Point Historical Society. Please stop in there and we have some brochures for a self-guided tour of Summers Point. And I thank you all for being here. And with that, the ceremony has concluded. Thank you.